Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for our session today. Bless our teachers as they demo their online teaching. Uh, help our orientation this coming Saturday. Thank you for everything, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, everyone. How are you? So, let's start. Everyone should do it. So, let's start. Anyone? Can I, like, I don't have to call. Try to do it, like, volunteer. You can use the chat box to say, uh, I'm next, ma'am. So, for the first one, may I request Teacher Barbs? Is that okay with you? Teacher Barbs? Can you hear me? Can you show a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly? Or a clap hands? Um, I think they cannot hear me, son. Can I see a thumbs up if you can hear me? Okay, good. So anyone can start now? Uh, is teacher Barb's there here? No, wala siya. Anyway, let's start with preschool muna. Teacher Winnie, can you start it? Good morning, everyone. I'm Teacher Winnie, and I will be your math teacher. So before we move on to our lesson, let me, let me remind you first that we have three rules to follow. The first one is focus on the screen. Next, listen to teacher. And the third one is raise your hand if you want to say something or if you want to answer. Okay? Okay, great. So today we're going to study about addition. Can you say it again? Okay, very good. But you know what you mean when you say addition? So when you say addition, it means putting things together. Can you say it with me? Addition means putting things together. Very good. Now look at the screen. What can you see on the screen? Yes, there are dots. But can you count it? How many dots can you see on the screen? Ready? One, two, three. Very good. There are three dots. Now look at on the other side. How many dots you can see? Let's count it. One, two. So there are two dots. Now look at this cross sign at the middle. You know that this cross sign is read as plus, and plus means addition. So when you say so when, if you can see this cross sign, it means addition. It means you're going to put the things together, okay? So if we're going to combine or put the three ducks and the two ducks together, it will become how many ducks? Can we count? One, two, three, four, five. So there will be five Ducks. So it means three plus two is equal to five. Okay, now let's try to learn what are the parts of addition. The three and two here are the numbers that you add, are the numbers that you put together. It's called annex. Can you say it again? Annex. Very good. And this five here, or the answer in addition, is three or called as sum. Say it again, sum. Okay, very good. Now, there are five ducks here. Do you want to sing with me? Yes? Okay. So let's sing the five little ducks. Let me share you my screen first. Okay. A while, and we we'll just okay. Five little duck. 
axe went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 but only four little ducks came back. One, two, three, four. Four little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 quack. But only three little ducks came back. One, two, three. Three little ducks went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 quack. But only two little ducks came back. One, two. Two little ducks went out one day Over the hill and far away Mother duck said quack, 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 quack But only one little duck came back One One little duck went out one day Over the hill and far away Mother duck said quack, quack Quack, quack, but none of the five little ducks came back. Sad mother duck went out one day over the hill and far away. Mother duck said quack, 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 and all of the five little ducks came back. Five little ducks went out one day. Over the hill and far away Mother duck said quack, 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 quack And all of the five little ducks came back Okay, very good That's great Did you love the song? Yes, very good Okay, now let's move on to our last one now, I have here with me my friend here. Wait, what, what animal is this? Yes, it's pig. And what the sound of the pig? Oink, oink, oink. And so I have here my little piglet. It's how many? Yes, it's one. Then my other friend here will try and ask. Oh, so now... My first friend, and then my second friend, and then how many pigs can you see? Let's count it. Ready? Okay. Let's count. One, two. So there are two pigs. Very good. Now I have here two balls. I have two balls. Then I will add another two balls. Now, how many balls you can see? Let's count it. So one, two, three, four. So it means two balls plus two balls is equals to four balls. Okay, great. That's the last example. Whoa. I have here some of animals. Okay, so here is Mr. Zebra, Mr. Zebra, and elephants. So how many animals we can see? Let's count. One, sorry, one, two, three. So there are three, three animals. Then I will add two more animals. Okay. So can you count how many animals now? One, two, three, four, five. How many? Five animals. It means three animals and then two more animals is equal to five. Okay, great. Do you understand? Okay, good job. Now let's go back on the screen and let's have some practice. 
Okay, allow me to share my screen with you again. Okay. Okay, now let's count, add, and write the song in the tree. What fruit is this? Can you tell me? Yes, it's orange. Now let's do this one first. One orange plus one orange is equals how many oranges? How many? Two, very good. Okay, next we have three orange count. One, two, three. Three oranges plus one more orange is equals to four oranges. Very good. Okay, so can you get your worksheets now? Okay, good job. So today you learn how to add numbers, okay? When you say addition again, it means putting things together. Can you say it one more time? Addition means putting things together. Okay, very good. So that's it for today. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. That's all, Ma'am Kati. <laughs> Here, hindi pa po ba siya nag Are you ready to learn today? All right, but before we start to study, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to pray. All right, how do we pray? I want everybody to follow teacher bars, right? Okay, when I say fast, everybody's going to do it fast. And when I say slow, everybody's going to do it slow. What are we going to do, teacher? All right, maybe the first thing that we're going to do is, hmm, I like wiggle our fingers. Okay, when I say wiggle, wiggle our fingers as fast as we can. Everybody wiggles their fingers as fast as they can. When I say wiggle their fingers as slow as you can, everybody's going to wiggle their fingers as slow as they can. All right? As long as you listen to teacher barbs, we're good. Are we ready? Okay, let's start. I Show me those fingers first. All right, there you go. And then you ready? Let's go. I can wiggle, wiggle, wiggle my fingers as fast as I can. Then we're going to wiggle our fingers as slow as we can. I can wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle my fingers as slowly as I can. Now, what's next, teacher Barb? I think I want us to clap our hands. You ready? I can clap, clap, clap my hands as slowly as I can. Clap, 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 clap my hands as I can. Now, we're going to shake our hands. Do you know how to shake your hands? Like this. Shake, shake, and shake. All right? It's very easy. Okay, we're going to shake. Shake, shake our hands as slowly as I can. Are you ready to shake your hands as fast as we can? Let's go. Shake, 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 shake my hands as fast as we can. And now we're going to pound. Do you know how to pound your fist? All right, let me show you first. This is how you pound your fist. Okay, one on top of the other. All right, can you follow me? One on top of the other. Okay, ready to go? I can pound, pound. Pound my fist as slowly as I can. Pump, 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 pump my fist as fast as I can. Good job. Now we're going to pray. How do we pray? We pray as dearly as we can. We put our hands together and bow down your head as we talk to Jesus. Let's go. I can pray, pray, pray as dearly as I can. Dear Jesus, thank you, Lord, for another day. Be with us, Lord, as we study all our lessons for today. Help us, Lord, to have fun and learn a lot today. Keep everyone safe, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good job, everyone. All right, I think we're ready to learn, but for, and again, I need, you to rem I need to remind you that um, the rules inside my classroom, okay? First rule inside my classroom is when teacher is talking, you're supposed to listen, all right? When teacher is talking, you're supposed to listen. Okay, second rule, focus, focus, eyes on teacher. One more time, focus, focus, eyes on teacher. Good job. And the last one, if you want to answer, what are you going to do? Are you going to talk all at the same time? Yeah, uh-uh. You're supposed to raise your hand and wait for your turn to be called. All right? So let's try to review that. First thing that you're going to do is focus, focus, eyes on teacher, and then when somebody
we get okay can you show me thumbs up if we're good to go get up all right mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, I want to check our attendance. Who's here today in our class? All right. Let's check who's here today. Okay. This is what I'll do. I'm going to share the screen. And if you see your picture on the wall, it's your turn to say good morning to your classmates and to teacher Barbara. All right. Again, if you see your picture on the wall, it's your turn to say good morning, classmates, and good morning, teacher Barb's. Okay. Let me share that picture now. Let me share the wall. Trini, sa you can send me yung iba. Tapos sa, sa Gmail ko, sa akin na lang. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, class. This is Teacher Diane, and welcome to our English class. So, are you ready or are you excited to learn new things for today? Very good. So, the aim of this meeting is for us to have a review of what we discussed yesterday, and that is is and are. Very good. And for today's lesson, we're going to discuss the usage of in front and behind. Again, in front and behind. So, before we proceed to our lesson for today, let's first have a review of the use of is and are. When do we use is? Is is used for one noun. Again, is is used for one noun. What is noun again? Noun is a name of a person, place, animal, or a thing. Very good. Again, is is used for one noun, while are is used for two or more nouns. Again, are is used for two or more nouns. Let's see. I have here exercises for you. So, kids blank playing. What are we going to use? How many kids do you see in the picture? Let's count, huh? One, two, three. Okay, if it's two or more, okay, two or more, what are we going to use? Is it is or are? Very good. We use are for two or more. How about this one? Very good. And a happy pineapple for you. This one is a picture of a swimsuit. Very good. How many swimsuits do you see? There's only one. And if it's only one, what are we going to use? Very good. We're going to use is. This is my swimsuit. Next one. Very good. Next one, what do you see in the picture? That is, that is a floater. Very good. It blank my floater. If it's only one floater, what are we going to use? Okay, we're going to use is. Very good. If it's only one noun, we're going to use is. It is my floater. Next one, correct answer. Next one. Those blank trees. How many trees do you see? One, two. If there, if there are two trees, we're going to use those. Very good. Those are trees. Good job. And last one. Very good. And last one is how many bags do you see there? There's only one bag. And if it's only one, what are we going to use? Are we going to use is or are? Very good. We're going to use is. Good job. So I think we are ready now to proceed with our lesson for today. And that is... Very good. And that is in front and behind. Again, it's in front and behind so in front means directly ahead again in front means directly ahead when i say in front can you do this very good when i say in front do point point directly ahead okay that's in front or directly ahead and behind means Behind means 
at the back. Again, in front and behind. One more time, in front and behind. Good job. I have here concrete example for you. This is a corn and this is a carrot. The corn is in front of the carrot. And the carrot is behind because the carrot is at the back of the corn. The carrot is behind the corn. Okay? The carrot is behind the corn while the corn is in front of the carrot. I have here another example. And this is a rake and a spade or a shovel. The rake is in front while the shovel is at the back or behind behind the rake okay it's behind the rake one last example the ball i have your ball and an egg again this is a ball and an egg the ball is in front while the egg is behind or at the back behind the ball okay Okay, let's study further. What do you see? What do you see in the picture? There is a, there is a shell. Very good. And I think there, oh, there's something hiding at the back of the shell. That is a crab. Very good. The shell is in front of the crab and the crab is behind the shell. Again. The shell is in front, the crab, and the crab is behind the shell. How about this one? This is a picture of a beach ball. Very good. And at the back of the beach ball, there, there are slippers or beach slippers. Okay? The beach ball is in front while the slippers are behind. Again, the beach ball is in front while the slippers are behind the beach ball. Next picture is, this is a picture of a hat. Very good. This is a hat and the hat is in front of the sunglasses. Again, the hat is in front of the sunglasses while the sunglasses are Behind the hat. Very good. Next one. This is a correct. That is a pail. A pail is in front while the shovel or the spade is at the back or behind. Again, behind the pail. The pail is in front of the shovel or the spade. While the spade or the shovel is behind the pail. Very good. And the last example that I have here is a surfing board. Very good. This is a surfing board. And the one behind the surfing board is a boy. Very good. So the surfing board is in front of the boy. While the boy is behind or at the back behind the surfing board. Okay? A teacher prepared some exercises for you. And this time, you're going to click the correct answer. Let's see if you understand the lesson, okay? Okay, where is the watermelon? Is it in front or behind the girl? Click the correct answer. Very good. The watermelon is in front of the girl. Good job. Next one. Where is the beach ball? Again, where is the beach ball? Is it in front or behind the boy? Click the correct answer. The correct answer is in front. Very good. So, the beach ball is in front of the boy. Good job. Next one. Okay, we're looking for the crab. Where is the crab? Is it in front or behind? Very good. 
The crab is behind the surfing board. Good job! Next one, or this is the last one. Where is the shovel? Is it in front or behind? Click the correct answer. Very good! The shovel is in front of the pail. Good answer. Uh, this time, we're going to use our annotate. We're going to encircle the correct picture. First, we're going to read the sentence and encircle the correct picture. Let's read. The dog is behind the bone. Again, the, we're looking for the dog that is behind the bone. Encircle the correct answer. Very good. The correct answer is the one on your right. Good job. Very good. Next one. The mouse is in front of the cheese. We are looking for the mouse that is in front of the cheese. Encircle the correct answer. Very good. This is the mouse, and the mouse is in front of the cheese. The cheese is behind the mouse. Very good. Last one. The bucket is behind the spade. The bucket is behind the spade. We are looking for the bucket that is behind or at the back of the spade. Where's the correct answer? In the circle. Very good. So, the bucket is found behind the spade and the spade is in front of the bucket very good so so your prize for today i'm going to give you a sand castle because you're very good and you're going to decorate your sand castle with a shell a crab and a starfish so we'll learn more about uh in front and behind tomorrow Oh, so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed your lesson. Goodbye! But I think my feedback is like that. So just add some biblical principle and yeah, very nice uh, presentation of your PowerPoint. Other, te other teachers' comments do you have? If not, let's move on to the next presenter, Teacher Barbara. Ready na to continue halfway where we stop. So, though it's 10 minutes, diba? So many things already in 10 minutes. You can present the lesson and review the past lesson, which I like. You review the past lesson, then you can go to the main lesson, and then you tell them tomorrow what's our lesson. Ganyan. So, I like the continuity and the flow, even though para siyang we just have it like demo type, but you you review what's the past and ganyan. Next. Teacher Janiza. No sound, nakamute. Umaga mga bata, ako nga pala si Binibining Niza, ang inyong guro sa Filipino. Meron ako ang tatlong patakaran. Una, tumingin sa akin. Pangalawa, makinig. Pangatlo, itaas ang kamay pag naisumagot. At ngayon, tayo ay mag-aaral ng letrang? Tama, ito ay letrang O. Alam mo ba ang tumot ng letrang O? Magaling! O, O, O! At ngayon, meron ako ditong ruleta at ating tutukuyin ang ngalan ng bawat bagay. Ang tawag nito ay okra. At ang okra ay nagsisimula sa letrang O. Ang okra ay isang mustansyang gulay. Ay isang orasan. Tama, ang orasan ay ginagamit upang malaman ang oras. Ang laraw kaya ang susunod. 
Ang tawag naman dito ay also. Ano nga ulit ang tawag dito? Tama, ito ay also. Ang tawag dito ay organ. Ginagamit natin ang organ upang tumugtog. Ito naman ay tinatawag na orchidias. Orchidias ay isang uy ng bulaklak. Ano ulit ang tawag dito? Tama, ito ay tawag na orchidias. Ngayon, gagawa tayo ng isang uy ng bulaklak na tinatawag na orchidias. to the presentation, Teacher Winnie. tayo ay magbabalik na sa mga bagay na inaral natin kanina na nagsisimula sa letrang O. Basahin ang mga pangalan, pagtugtungin ng guhit ang larawan at pangalan nito. Ang unang tanong ay oso. Maaari mo bang hanapin kung nasaan ang oso? Ang oso ay isang uri ng hayo. Ang susunod ay orchidias. Ang orchidias ay isang uri ng bulaklak. Kanina lamang ay gumawa tayo ng orchidias. Nasaan ang orchidias? Tama! Ang pangatlo ay orasan. Nasaan ang orasan? Ang orasan ay may mga numero at may dalawang kamay. Magaling! Ang susunod, okra. Ang okra ay isang uri ng gulay, masustansyang gulay. Tama! At ang panghuli ay organ. Ang organ ay ginagamit sa pagtugtog. 
Tama! At ngayon, alam nyo na ang mga bagay na nagsisimula sa letrang O. Ano nga ulit ang tunog ng letrang O? Magaling! O, O, O. Salamat. Okay na po, Ma'am Kat. Nakamute po kayo, Ma'am. That's the end of your lesson. Uh, you exceeded one minute. So, anyway, my comment is too complicated yung origami. And I think if you want to let them sidetrack and do some origami, maybe, or something else, age appropriate lang. Kasi the way I see even adults, parang <laughs> may rapan doon. And then the picture for matching is not so clear. So maybe you need to double click yung sa the picture image in the Google if that's where you get it para it's clearer. Make sure it's clear lang. Ganon. Any other comments? Teacher Juniza, you're very fluent in Tagalog. So Filipino is your cup of tea, right? In your first language, no? So Keep it up, Teacher Juniza, and yeah, when you download something, let's try to make a clear picture. And, um, and prepare all your math materials. So these are the materials that you need to prepare. Your activity one kit, glue, marker, crayon, or any coloring materials, notebook, your pencil, math skill book, and your math content book. So are you ready to start grade one? We're going to play a game. Do you want to play a game? So this game is Simon Says. Do you know the game Simon Says? You just need to do all the things that Simon will ask you to do. Are you ready grade one? I want everybody to stand up. Let's start the game grade one. Simon says, Simon says, only do what Simon says. Simon says, Simon says, only do what Simon says. So Simon says, touch one table. Simon says, touch your two ears. Simon says, turn around three times. One, two, three. So Simon says, clap your hands four times. One, two, Simon says, stop your feet five times. One, two, three, four, five. So Simon says, blink your eyes six times. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. Now Simon says, stop your fingers seven Forward and write numbers from 1 to 20. So for this 
one, we're going to have an activity. So first thing that you're going to do, you have to prepare all your math materials. So what are those materials? Make sure you have your activity one kit. You have your glue. You have your marker with you. Next thing, you have to get okay. the circle cut out. This one. You have to get the circle cut out, and the rate, you have to paste the space of the uh, you have to paint the space on the border of the circle like the rays of the sun. Just like this one, grade one. We're going to form. Um, uh, you have to paste all the space that you have on your activity one kit, like on the border of the circle, like the rings of the sun. Okay, let's start now, green one. You have to <laughs> start you and start green now. Okay, what about? Okay, you may ask help from your mommy or daddy or any um, adult that right now. Okay, so we're going to do it together. Just tell me if you're done basing all the, uh, right, the streets on the border of the circle. So just keep um, facing all the boards, all the streets. <laughs> part 
entering will ask you a question and if you want to answer you may uh, you can raise your hand for the first question how many rays does your sun have okay very good there are 20 rays so how do you know that there are 20 rays good job because the last number is 20. Okay, I'm going to show you the number 20. The last number that we wrote is 20. And for your second question, how can we find out how many objects are there in all? We can start counting from 1 and keep counting till we reach the last object. So the last number that we say shows the number of objects in the given set. For the third question, grade one, how can we show how many objects are there? Okay, we can show how many objects there are using numbers or numerals. So such numbers are called cardinal numbers. So what are cardinal numbers? Um, this tells us how many objects are there in a given set. Can we count from 1 to 20, grade 1? We're going to follow the teacher Elaine. So let's count. Follow the arrow. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Good job, grade 1. Trading will be a few of your class. Okay, I think you're um you know the how to count from one to twenty. Now we're going to have additional activity. We're going to count the objects and find out how many are there in the given set. If you want to answer, you can raise your hand. How many? How many objects are there in the given set? Okay, very good. There are twenty crayons. Now, how about for the second one? How many objects are there in the given set? Good job. There are 18 nuts. Next, for the last one, how many stars are there in the given set? Exactly. There are 12 stars. Very good. Now, let's have this one. They're going to fill in the missing numbers by counting forward. Okay, so what is the what are the missing numbers? Let's have 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the missing numbers are 17, 18, and 19. Good job, grade one. So I think we can proceed now with our application. So we're going to have an exercise. I want you to get your skill book and answer page five. So if you're in the discuss these instructions, then you have to answer it on your own. Um, first thing that you're going to do, you have to write the date. For number one, you have to count the objects and write the number on this part. For number two, you have to draw 12 balloons and you have to prepare your crayons. You have to color them. Any color that you want. For letter B, Write numbers from 1 to 20 in the given period. Then for the last one, you have to fill in the missing numbers. So you just need to count forward and find out what are the numbers that are missing. Okay, if you're done grade 1, you have to send it to teacher and email. So for your homework for today, I want you to answer practice questions 1 to 3 on page 15. You can see it on your content book. So do you have any questions, read one? Again, before we end our class, what's our aim? We're going to count forward and write numbers. I don't need to count forward and write numbers from 1 to 20. So that's all for today, grade 1. I hope you enjoy and learn something today. Again, I'm teacher Elaine, your math teacher, saying goodbye, grade one. Goodbye, grade one. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for that presentation. That was nice. Um, you exceeded around two and a half minutes.
but it's okay. Uh, what's important is the because you added some activity already. So that's another counting. But for the lesson proper, I think it's just around 10 minutes. So any comments? So I like the best practice that I like with the flow is let's always start with the aim, which teacher Diane also did in your class. Now our goal for this up morning's lesson is a ganyan. So make it clear what is your aim for your class that session and then the analysis part because we are training our students to be problem solver critical thinkers so it's good to give throw them good questions um, teacher elaine the question is coming from exceed uh, teachers manual right mom yes mom starting from the uh, from the game up to the last part that's from the exit, nag add lang po ako ng mga additional activity mo. Yes, um, I agree. So, ang, uh, I don't know if preschool you're using what textbook or what is your guide. Um, the good thing with exit is you are given clearly what aim, parang what is your objective or aim, what analysis questions that will be thrown to the kids for them to think, not right away give them answer. Let them think. Oh, how do you know how many rays of the sun? Uh, because of kanyan. You let them think. So, um, I like when you do analysis part. So, in your teaching, make sure you don't neglect the aim and the analysis part. Then, activity, which is sometimes it leads to assessment like that. So, let's give... You pray, you incubate for a preschool teacher because you don't have that in your teacher's manual not to throw them questions that you ask to let them think critically. So, yun. Anyway, let's move on to the next. Good morning, grade 2. Welcome to our class. And here's our first lesson in physical education. Are you ready? Before we start, here are the things that we need to prepare. First is pencil and notebook good internet connection, listening ears, and cooperating body. Now, if all these things are with you right now, please do thumbs up. Great. So let's start. Hmm, great too. Did you hear that sound? What is that sound? That's the sound of a moving train. Now, I'm going to show you two sets of pictures. Here's the set one and the set two. Anyone who has any idea what did I show? On the first set, I showed you picture of a train. But on the first picture, it's moving. On the second, it's not. Just like on the second slide. The two boys are running. The other girl is just doing stretching. It's moving and it's not moving, right? Because today we're going to learn about types of movement. We have two types of movement. First is locomotor movement and then non-locomotor movement. When we say locomotor movement, these are the movements where you move from one place to another. Example is running, hopping, Leaping and then sliding. Okay, shall we do it? Everyone, please stand up and let's do running, hopping, leaping, and sliding. Running, hopping, leaping, and then sliding. Okay, now, did you see grade 2 that I'm moving from one place to another? So it means when we're doing locomotor movement, we need a lot of space. We need big space so that we can do locomotor movement. So now let's proceed with the non-locomotor movement. When we say non-locomotor movement, these are the movements where you stay in one place only. Example is twisting. 
Bendy. Shaking. And then wiggling. Right? We can do non-locomotor movements even if we're just going to stay in one place. Even we're sitting down, even we're just going to stand in one place, we can do non-locomotor movement. Right? So again, before we proceed with our practice question, let's have a review. Locomotor movement, these are the movements where you move from one place to another. And the non-locomotor movement, these are the movements where you stay in just one place and you can move. Okay? Ready for our practice question? Great. Okay. Now I'm going to show you some action and go with the right on your paper. LM if it's locomotor movement and LM if it's non-locomotor movement. First, bending. Leaping. Walking, twisting, okay. Going to give you 30 seconds to finalize your answer. In bending, what is that movement? Is that locomotor or non-locomotor? Great job. That's a non-locomotor movement. And then leaping is a locomotor movement. Walking is a locomotor movement. And then twisting is NLM because it's non-locomotor movement since you're just going to stay in your place. That's it. And now we're all done. Is it hard to memorize or it's hard to understand what's the difference of the two types of movement? Then locomotor and the non-locomotor movement. It's easier, right? Because I'm happy. I'm happy that every one of you are listening to teacher and you're cooperating with our activity for today. Um, before we say goodbye to each other, please read my quotation. Movement is the language of our body. And we need to stay healthy. Any questions? Read two. Okay, none. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something for our today's lesson. Goodbye. Thank you, Teacher Grace. Um, any comments from the audience, from co-teachers? Let's... I like when you show pictures at the same time you act it out that's good and um i like what teacher elaine did before the start of the class she do a game actually teachers you can incorporate mga like that ha? like start with something that would hook your student actually it's just one minute lang din or less and for teacher grace you just exceeded around less than one minute mga half minute but it's okay because you also did some activity. Um, what I would like to comment is, yeah, your pictures are not just uh, stationary. It's a moving pictures. It's good for younger kids, even older. It's nice if there's movement, yung mga pictures, no? So what did you use? You use what? Uh, Google Slide or PowerPoint? The ordinary. PowerPoint. PowerPoint daw po, ma'am. Ma'am, I use PowerPoint and the, thing, the template came from the slides. Go.com. GIS ng GIS. My slides go.com po. Yes, GIF po. GIF, the moving pictures. Yeah. Wala pa masyado tayo nag-use sa mga what we learn, no, from our takeaway from the seminars. But anyway, um, yeah, so... Keep it up. Yeah, you know that you highlight. I like when you highlighted about that exercise is good for the body and it's also good like treat it sacred by taking care of our body because it's a temple of the Holy Spirit yung body natin, no? So we have to emphasize that na in every day, if possible, let's do exercise every day. Kasi kids right now are at home 
you encourage your kids to do some form of exercise with their parents. Yeah, all those non-locomotor and locomotor combined, like 15 to minutes a day exercise. And ask also teachers. Um, so, yeah, it's good to give application, not just knowledge and the analysis part. Okay, let's move to the next. Good morning, grade one. I am teacher Vanessa. Uh, welcome to our first day of classes. Today is August 24, 2020, and I'm happy to see each one of you as we begin our school year. So uh, let me hear from you guys. So how are you? This is the first time that I am seeing you. So how was your vacation? Are you staying at home? Oh my God. So that's what we are going to do today. So today we are going to start our lessons, but we are going to uh, share each other's experiences. So let me start with, uh, let me just check, okay? Let me start sharing. So today is uh, August 24, 2020, and we will start talking about uh, English. So we are going to have our classes today. So we are on block number one. So first, let me clarify our let me clarify our rules. First and foremost, because this is an English class, we everybody should speak in English. Everyone should follow directions. Everyone should pay attention. I want all of your eyes looking at teacher van during the lesson. I want us to be friends with each other. And I want us working very hard so that by the end of the session or by the end of the school year, all of us are ready to take on any challenges in English. We also use magic words. What magic words do you know? Mm -hmm. What other magic words do you know? Uh, teacher, you will be the one to respond. Good. So we have three. Thank you, and excuse me, and may I. So I want all of these words. Uh, I want to hear all of these words when you are talking to each other and when you are talking to me. And of course, above everything else, I want us to learn happily. I want us to enjoy our time together. Yes, we are going to study, but studying doesn't mean that it has to be bad. Studying is enjoyable and it is fun. Let's continue. So also, because we are, we are studying in English, there are some more things that we need to remember. First and foremost, we have two books. Can you please get this book? This is what you call the student workbook. Okay, and this one is the content book. So the red one is the student handbook. This is the one that we are going to use when we are uh, talking, when we are going to answer. On the green book, on the other hand, we call it the content book. This is our way, this is where our stories are and our uh, lessons are, okay? So you should always remember to have your English, the workbook, the English workbook and the English content book together with you at all times. Of course, we need a pencil, we need paper, and we need your notebook number two. Your notebook number two will be your English notebook. Next one is we have, oh, we are going to start sharing with each other. Let's start. I will be calling you one by one. Let me check first if you changed your name because I don't want to call your parents' names on those screens, okay? I want you to change it to your name. Okay, good. So let me ask you one by one. So what is your favorite food? Mm-hmm. Good. Next one is do you have a pet? What kind of pet is it? Great. Now, what do you like doing? What is the best thing that you like to do in all, all over the world? Every time, all the time. Okay. That's good. So, again, in our class, we have to share. Share what we feel. Share what we know. Okay. In our class, we have to read. So I expect that each one of you already knows how to read. But sometimes there are some words that you do not understand or you do not, you cannot read. So what you're going to do is, teacher Van, what word is this? You can always ask me, okay? Next one, of course, we are going to write. 
Okay, we are going to write words and sentences. Your words and sentences should always come from your head and sometimes it should also come from your heart also on what you believe in. We are going to do some spelling. We are go, oh, do not hesitate to ask. If you have any question, you can use your reaction buttons on your screen. We have already trained for that. So you can use your reactions or you can also use your chat box. Okay, we can also use our chat box. Next one, very, very important. Above everything else, we have to think of our answers. We have to think of our stories. We have to think of our lessons so that we understand everything that is happening. Memorization is okay, but understanding is better. Okay, you understand? Good. Next one. So let's begin. I have here, what is that? Mm hmm Okay. So, this is a, a what again? Great. Now, have you ever blown up a balloon? Now, it's very difficult to blow up a balloon, right? Because it hurts here. So, you have to breathe hard and deep so that you can blow up a balloon, right? Have you ever tried it? Okay, good. Next one. When do we use balloons? Okay. What other times do we use a balloon? Okay, that's good. Now, why are pictures important in a story? Why do we have uh, to get all of the pictures and look at them? Okay, let me just pause for a while. Stop share. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I want you to think very, very hard. On what places have you ever seen a balloon? Yes, we always see it uh, when there's a party, usually on a birthday party, right? So we always see balloons at those times. Now let's continue with our lesson. So here, let's look at this one. This will be our aim. Can you please read it for me? Okay, let's read it together. Today, we will look at some pictures and words in a story about a boy and a balloon. One more time. Read it together with me. Today, we will look at some pictures and words in a story about a boy and his balloon. Good. So that will be our lesson. Now, you have to pay attention to the words over here. The aim is the one that we should focus on when we are having classes. That means that is our goal when we have our everyday classes. So let's begin. This is now our analysis part. So this is, what is this? What can you see from the picture? Okay, it's a boy blowing up a balloon. So this is our, look at this one. Can you see that one on your green book? Let's look at your green book. Let's flip your page to page number 13. So you can see page number 13 there. So this is my balloon. Okay, I'm going to wait for you. Everybody's there already? So you can see that that's the first picture in our story. So let's look at this one. These are now the parts of a story or a book. This is what we call, read it for teacher. Good. This is our title. Next one, what kind is this? Yes, this is the kind of text. Meaning, this is where we're going to see what kind of story, what kind of poem, what kind of uh, text we are going to read. So you have to understand. Okay, next page. We have our, let's look at this one. Can you please flip your page to page number 17. This is the picture on the screen. We are on page number 17. Okay, now here we can see all kinds of pictures in the story. So there are a lot of pictures in our story, My Balloon. Can you please count them? There's one, two, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine and ten. We have ten pictures in our story. So pictures are very important. This one, on the other hand, you can see at the bottom of the page. These are what we call words to learn. 
These are the keywords that we have to remember. The keywords mean, number one, those are the big words that we have to understand. And number two, these are your these are your spelling list. Okay? This is where we're going to find our spelling list. Now, let's go to the next one. Can you please get your red book now? Let's try to answer your red book. Okay. From your red book, can you please, this is your workbook, don't forget. From your workbook, here we are on page number five. Can you please get your pencils ready? An eraser if you need one. Okay, good. So here's what we're going to do. First and foremost, I want you to always, always write the date today. Can you please write the date over here? Can you see that? Let me just stop for a while. What is the date today? Okay, let me share screen again. Today is, let's write it together. Today is August. I'll write it as nicely as you can. I am not in a hurry. So today is August 24. What's the year? That's correct. Today is August 24, 2020. Good. So what I want you to do is to write the date on this side. Okay. Can somebody read this one? What is the title of our first activity? Okay. That's correct. Getting ready to read. So on the first one, it says there, let's try to do it together, okay? Let's, it says there, look at the first page of the story, My Balloon, and color the picture that you see on the first page. Now, what did you see on the first page of our story? Did we see a house? Did we see a balloon? Or did we see a, a sun? Anybody? What can you remember? Okay, good. We saw a red balloon. Can you please color your red balloon? Okay, I'm going to wait. We are not in a hurry. I want you to always write with your best handwriting. That's good. Let's, get to, let's go to the bottom part. It says there, can somebody read the instructions for teacher? Okay, so we should look at all the pages of the story, My Balloon. And you should color the boxes that have keywords from the story. Is there a word mom in our story? Again, we will try to do this to get to do this together because this is our first time. So you do not need to worry. Teacher Van is here to help you. Do you see the word mom in the help box? Can you yes, you can. Can you the, end, you the word mom? Next one. Who is that? Please turn your content book to page number. Let me check page number 20. It's an easy peasy activity, so I think all of you will get the perfect score. All of you will get the correct answer. So we're there? Okay, good. Now let me just show this to you. We are on page 33. Did you find it? Did you see the page? Good. Pencils ready, please. Okay, teacher Van will be reading the question. The question. Let's begin. It says here, what is the name of the story? Check. You know how to check? Check the correct answer. I won't tell you the correct answer. Okay, good. Number two, it says there, match the pictures to the words. So which one is mom? Which one is dad? And which one is the family? Okay. Okay. Mm. All of you answered already? Did you have a hard time answering these questions? None? Okay, good. So we next one, we have our worksheet. So next worksheet. So I will have to say goodbye first, and I'll see you again. We're going to do our worksheet together, but let me just stop my recording for now. Let's see you later. Thank you. So the lesson is, 
uh, focusing on parts of the story. Teacher Bar Ban. What I like about the presentation, yes, like, yes, huh? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, part yes, of the story. Yes. So maybe uh, I like to see how you read the story in a way that makes it like appealing, like you know, something like um animate you animate it like to engage them, like you are storytelling, talaga, and then. I like what you did. You annotate when you let them write in the date and you write it for but them. But the storytelling will come the next day. Next but day. The, the storytelling will come the next day. Yes. Hello, baby. Today we will learn about matter. So when you the word matter, what is something that comes to me? You can use an HP. Okay. So when you say matter, what is matter? Matter is everything that comes across our lives. The everything around us is matter. Let me give you an example. So a matter can be the reality. It is a piece of paper, it can be a pencil, a paper, or a book. Matter can also be done because the piece of paper may call the piece of paper. So everything around us is matter. So we're still confused about matter. So we still have questions about matter. Okay, let's explore more about matter. Then let's also answer this question. Why matter matters? So later we will answer this question. So what like I have said earlier, matter is everything, everything around us. For example, in school. So everything around us in school is matter. It can be our school dance. The books, the toys in school, what else? The trees outside, the pencil, the crayons, the musical instruments, the art books that we have during our class, which matter. So, also, your classmates and even your teachers. We even need we are all men. So at this point in time, I want you to use your anti-social models because we don't have a computer. Since you know that everything around is matter, I just want you to insure the matter that I will explain, which is also here in the picture. So you will use your annotation buttons to insert for the object or the matter that I will explain in 10 seconds. We have the timer. So if you see the timer, that is your cue or the sign that you will insert for the object that I am describing to. Is it clear, baby? Number one, you need your annotation buttons. Number two, there is a 10 second timer that is your cue. In the number two, we will insert the object that I will describe. Is it clear? Okay, let's start. Now, what is this matter? It is so far in the flavors using our cue. The timer starts now. Two, 
time's up. Okay. So what? Or what is the answer? So something to circle and play this thing. What is that? Soccer ball. Very good. So for this, you're going to get the answer. You can drop your hands. And you can see the video. Okay. So, aside from everything that is around us, it's beautiful. Everything is also that is around us at home is also matter. For example, the roof, the walls, the floor, the table, the chairs, the cabinets, the television, the windows, the curtains, everything around us at home. That is matter. Matter. There for the annotation I mean. and let us find the matter that the teacher is trying. Let's just repeat what um, we did earlier. Okay. So this matter we can find inside the bedroom and also inside the living room. It is so. What is this matter? Now, what is this? Inside the living room, inside of the room, it's so. What is the correct answer? Okay, a pillow. Very good. So, what is the correct answer? Drop your hands. Very good. Now, aside from everything that you see in school, inside your house, your bedroom, your restroom, your living room, the kitchen, the attic, the balcony, the garden, everything that you can see around um, your school or at home, matter. When you go outside, you can also see or surrounded by matter. For example, the buildings, the churches, the houses, the walls, and the vehicles, the multi-pairs, the cycles, the playground, the bench, the water, the river, the ocean, the people, the animals around. Everything is matter. Everything is made up of matter. This year, day two. So in school, at home, and outside, we are showing the light matter. Okay. So let's continue our activity. So, to carry your annotation buttons again, and let us insert the wall, which will be described. Okay, when you're ready. So it is not a plane, but it can fly. What is it? It's not a plane that can fly. Two, one, and so. So what is the answer of the good students? So it's not a plane that it can fly. The answer is the kite. Okay, very good for those who have the correct answer. You can you can say so in school, in at home, outside, um, at us. So, in the other place where you go, everything is matter. Now, how are we go since we already know that everything around us is matter? Let's answer the very important question. How are you going to identify or define rather? How are you going to define matter? Do you have any idea? According to science, matter is something that has weight. That has weight means everything. It has value and picks up its use. So that's matter. Matter has value 
volume in terms of space. What do you mean by that? What is good? Okay. So we class us how heavy something is. So most of the time we use scale to tell how heavy something is or how light something is and to compare the weight of two objects. Right. So as you can see, laptop also has volume in each of space. So what is the volume in this space that we are talking about now? It is about the volume that we adjust when we are listening to music, watching television, or videos in YouTube, or when we are playing games at night and then we don't turn out our parents to play the games that we play. Or when we say space, it is about the outer space where we can see the stars, the moon, the planets, the astronauts. Actually, the space volume and the space that we are talking about. When we say volume, we say it's just about that. Volume is the amount of the amount of space that something is using or something occupies. Earlier, I have an example for you. The air that we breathe. So, who are we going to identify the weight of air that we breathe or the water? Where in water they are? Matter. So, how are we going to identify the weight and the volume of things? So, tomorrow in our new lesson. So far, based on what I saw, it's kind of choppy yung sound. It's not very clear. And the lighting. Actually, Teacher Van's lighting kulang pa. Teacher Van, you can also add something like at your back or lamp. Or if you can use daytime class, since the class is daytime, so I think it's enough lighting yung sunlight. But lighting is very important. Even our camera, actually, Pastor Don bought, bought Logitech, something like um, video. But even without that, basta good ang lighting, it's clear yung mukha. So, you have to do with your lighting, invest on the light. I think by, I don't know how much my husband bought sa Lazada or something. Can you see this? Parang 300 peso to. And then she buy something like this to stand. But it's up to you kasi it helps yung lighting. And then the sound is, I don't know if you need to buy a mic. Like, I like the sound of Teacher Diane. It's very, no effort, much effort in talking, pero it's very clear. So, I think invest on that one. Lighting and microphone, or I don't know, how much is that? Teacher Diane, how much did you buy that one? to use the what we learn in our training about um, how to use a different tone of voice especially your teaching you should be very excited show that you are really wanting to teach them so with your picture you you show them the answer and if you can type your question because actually I'm really trying my best to listen to your voice pero soft na, monotone na voice, parang nagachapi. So, I think you have to work on your mic and your lighting is gloomy. So, kasi kung gloomy, naantok din yung students. And then, uh, put some action to your, if you can start with action or you can start with, uh, end with, uh, basta in the middle, if you think, pati ikaw, parang you feel like, you can sense eh. While you are teaching, if you're engaging or not, if you find it that you are not engaging, so let's say, well, let's stretch for a while. Let's do inhale, exhale. Actually, it could be beginning, it could be middle. Basa to to break the monotone of your lesson. That's important. Okay. So, uh, break the monotony of the lesson. Okay. So. I think that's all.
we need to invest on this area, yeah, lighting and the sound. I think we reiterate that already. Better to the students. So when you incorporate songs, rhythm, like rap or what. Okay. Thank you, teachers. I know it's been a long time. Uh, let's move on to teacher Barbara. John 3 or grade 3A class. Good morning, everyone. So today we shall have our lesson one, God Created Me and Cares for Me, is the title of our lesson for today. So I would like to welcome everyone for this first day of class, our first lesson for our moral education. Let's have a word of prayer first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Give us wisdom as we have our class. May everybody understand the lesson for today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So, let's continue now. Okay, the aims for our lesson for today are this. Learn that the Bible is God's message for me and for you. Okay, so the Bible is God's message for us. Number two, our aim is that to know that God created us and cares for us. Also, another aim for today's lesson is that we will be able to identify the Old Testament books. Okay, do you know the Old Testament books of the Bible? We shall know them today. Now, our memory verse is found in Micah chapter 7, verse 18. In the NIV version, it says, God pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. Now, it is only God who can pardon our sin or who can forgive our sin. Okay. Only the Lord Jesus Christ has the authority and the power to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness and our transgressions. The remnant of his inheritance are those people who believe in him and in his word. Now, you here means God. God does not stay angry forever, but he rather delights to show mercy. Okay, so we will be studying God's word. Now, I have a question for you. If there was a book that was about you, what story would it tell? If somebody will write a book about her life, what will it have? Or if you will write your own book about yourself, what will your story be like? There are different types of books, different types of stories. Now, what will our story be like? Will it be like The Little Mermaid, Sleeping Beauty, or Brave, Adventurous and Very Brave? Or will it be, a, will it be like Harry Potter's story? There are different stories and all our lives are different from each other. These books are nice. I don't have anything against them. They are nice to read. They are. They can be practices for you, for reading, and for your comprehension as well. But there's a much greater book that we need to know in our life. And this is the Bible. The Bible is God's Word. Now, there are interesting facts about the Bible. Do you know that there are 66 books in the Bible? The Bible or the word Bible comes from a word that means books. And the Bible itself is like a library containing 66 different books. It has been translated into 1,200 different languages. Okay. The original was written in, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and Aramaic. The New Testament is written in Greek. But there has been many, many translations, especially the English version. There are also um, Filipino versions of the Bible. There are even dialects of the Bible. Cebuano, Kapampangan, there are translations of the Bible. There are over one, 100 different names of God in the Bible. The Bible is also written over 
1,600 years period of time with 40 different authors. Okay? This started in 1,500 BC until the AD 100. This is also the world's number one or the best-selling book. If you are fond of reading book or buying books, you have to know that the Bible is the number one top-selling, best-seller book of all times. When you read the Bible, you read a message from God Himself. When the Bible speaks, God speaks. Now, the Bible has 66 books divided into two divisions. Right? Two divisions, the Old Testament books, and the New Testament books. In the Old Testament books, there are 39 books. In the New Testament books, there are 27 books. Okay? But for today, we shall be concentrating only about the Old Testament books, the 39 books of the Bible. Right? 39 books of the Old Testament part of the Bible. Now, it's it will not be hard for us to remember the books of the old testament because they are divided into five divisions okay and it's five twelve five five twelve okay five books are in the law twelve for history five for poetry five for major prophets and twelve for minor prophets now the bible is not um the Bible is not written chronologically, meaning Genesis is not the first, the first one that was finished or the first one that was written. But rather, the Bible is designed and grouped into these five um, categories or these five groups. Again, we will study them one by one. The law, five books. History, 12 books. Poetry, five books. Major prophets, five books. Minor prophets, 12 books. Let's learn about them. First is the book of the law. The book of the law is written by Moses. It is also called the Pentateuch. Pentateuch means five books. So there are five books, and these books are written by Moses. This is also called the Torah in other um, in, especially in the Jewish or in the um, nation of Israel, they know this as the Torah or the Law of Moses. They are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and the Deuteronomy. So these five books are called the Law because this starts from the genesis the story of the story of man how the story of the world actually of how god created the world how god created man and because of the fall of man they the fall of man they entered into sin and what god did what god promised for us to for us to have salvation Okay. So even in the first book of the Bible, God already promised salvation for each and every one of us. And that's in through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the, the law or in these five books, you will also see the Ten Commandments of God, which God gave through his servant Moses. And other commandments, other laws that God gave for us or for the children if Israel first to understand what Israel. So this contains God's warnings, God's um, instructions for them of what they should do in their life in how they would they should be uh, worshiping God. Okay? These are also warnings and also comfort when they fell, as, as I said, they, they oftentimes fell into idolatry. So God made, also, made it also possible for them to be captured by other nations. Okay? So they became slaves of other nations, Egypt, Babylon. Okay? So you can all see this in the five major prophets. Now, if there are major prophets, there are also there are also called minor prophets. Now, the minor prophets are twelve okay, books right, written by twelve different 
prophets. They are called minor because they are short, but they are short eh, but to the point warnings from God's prophets. So this starts with Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah. Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So these are the 12 minor prophets. Okay, remember this sequence of the Old Testament books. Okay, now you can find that. Don't worry if we, it seems that we are going fast. You can find them in your book, in our book, Following God. Now, let's talk about it. You can also find this in our book. Let's answer these questions. How were the different authors of the Bible able to come up with the same message of the good news of God's plan to save the people? You see, when the Bible was written, they do not know each other. Their authors do not meet together. As I said, they were written from a different span of time. They are different authors, they do not know each other, but the theme of what they are writing are all the same. Okay? It has the same message of how God will save his people. How? How are these different authors able to pin down or to write down the same messages? Let's talk about it. Give me two minutes to think and let's answer. I'll call on people, I'll call on some of you to answer me, okay? Now, let's go to the second. Why do you think God take care of the people, even though they disobeyed him over and over again? As I told you earlier, the, the nation of Israel were not 100% um, faithful to God. They were not always faithful to God. They would always disobey God. They would always look for another God, worship another God instead of God himself. But even though they are doing this, and they have done this over and over, God did not forsake them. God did not abandon them. God has always taken care of them. Why is that so? Why do you think was that so? Again, give you time to answer. Now, the third question is, what does the Old Testament teach you? Who has heard of stories from the Old Testament in Sunday school or in churches? Or have you read, it? probably you have read it in your Bible or a Bible story book. Can you say something about it? Commute ka po, Ma'am Kati. Okay, thank you, Teacher Sila. Um, what's so nice is you use what we learn, yung peer deck. So you use Google Slide, then you just add on yung peer deck as your, to make your transition yung mga nagro-roll. Ganon? How did you, what did you incorporate sa slide mo? What apps? Uh, I cannot hear you. Anyway, nice background with Welka logo. Maybe yung pronunciation lang yung Nahum, di ba? Nahum yan siya. And then, nice analysis questions. Yung question when you ask the three questions sa last part for them to think. Yeah, very nice. How? Uh, so let the students really be able to answer. But may kulang lang to make it more lively. Maybe you can use songs or incorporate some hand gestures so the memorization will be more engaging yung pag-memorize nila. Kasi if we just read through it, sometimes it's like uh, no much engagement from the students. Okay, so next. Who else?